Hey, this is Carrot here. We're back with the last minute. We're back. We're <laughs> we're here with the first video of the last remnant playthrough. This isn't a walkthrough because I haven't beaten the game yet. We are here in the tutorial area where we are introduced to a little bit of the battle system that will be here for the entirety of the game. So on the left here, we have our unions and their union leaders, uh, signified by their icons on there. And then on the right, we have our enemy unions and those little dots on the bottom, those little blue dots. That just means how many units or party members are in each union. Uh, the more I explain it, the more confusing it gets. But that's that's basically it. So what will happen in between these battles is uh, you can interrupt the enemy, they can interrupt you, and if multiple unions attack one enemy, then it'll just it'll keep on stacking the damage. So I'm gonna stop explaining the battle system now because, like I said before, the more I talk about it, the more confusing it gets. So here's David's gay bulg, and then I will see you very shortly in the next tutorial. All right, we're back in the next tutorial. We're going to be introduced to opening chests and Rush's uh, ultimate attack. This is just me showing off the speed difference between sprinting and regular running. I believe in the previous versions of this game, before the remastered anyway, uh, you could not sprint. And that was a major flaw on the, developer, on the developer's side. Excuse me. I'm trying not to stutter as much and say the word uh a lot. Here we go, opening the chest, we have a broadsword. So since Rush here is the main character, he can use almost every weapon in the game, including different styles, like, you know, one-handed, two-handed, dual-wielding, stuff like that. I will be sticking with the sword and shield. The basics of this game, besides the very, very simple combat, is uh, you want to be as low level as possible. Because the stronger you are, the stronger the enemies become. They do scale with you, and in some cases they will scale way above your level, which is bad. So, a low BR run this will be. You will gain EXP because not all the side quests in this game are uh, battle free. In fact, almost all of them, uh, in almost all of them, you have to fight a mini boss within that quest. So, right here, I am disabling one of Emma's uh, skills, which is the knee splitter. That is a one handed skill. I want her to focus on dual wielding. You'll notice that I will purposely disable certain units uh, skills because I want them to f primarily focus on something else. And what that does is that uh, if we have all melee guys in one union, that just makes things more organized versus having two melee guys and one magic guy. We don't want that. So coming up here, we will be introduced to Rush's uh, special attack, as I said before. This will trigger when you have a certain amount of AP action points, and if Rush is the leader of the union. So here I am, I'm debating on whether I should buy a shield or not, but in the end I don't think I buy any because we'll actually be picking up one free shield in an area called Dilmore, and another one in an area called Lava Fender. But that will be in future videos. Right now we need to head to the pub, talk to the barkeep, I believe, and then trigger the next few cutscenes. Speaking of cutscenes, I will not be showing any. I want this to be a gameplay only type of playthrough. Well, it'll be a playthrough for me and just 
kind of a let's play for anyone watching this. Uh, the side quests are kind of interesting, although I do sometimes skip through the earlier dialogue. So if you want to walk through where that shows all the cutscenes and slows down the text so you can read all the dialogue within the side quests, then I would suggest searching elsewhere. Right now we're going to unlock the combat skills for Rush. So we have chosen to go with Blocker to the Gathering Caves. When you choose side quests in the future, they will automatically warp you to the area uh, that has that objective. Like, um, we're going to be returning here to the Gazling Caves to rescue some rich kid. And it'll automatically warp us there once we accept the quest. Since I did say that we'll be good, we'll be uh, <laughs> we'll be doing a low BR run in this playthrough. Uh, what that means is, besides the main bosses or the mini bosses, you know, besides our objectives, well, is what I mean. Uh, we won't be grinding at all unless we run into accidentally, of course, unless we run into an enemy like I did a few minutes ago. But other than that. Uh, we won't be grinding at all, because you want to stay low level. After you beat a certain number of unions, your battle level will increase. But it helps if you only fight the bosses. That way it won't rise quite as fast. Because having a low BR also lets you increase your stats just a bit faster. Because the key here is that you want to keep your unions weak, like physically you know, attack-wise, weak, because the more hits you do, the more chances you have of increasing your skills and increasing your stats like HP and strength. Uh, I did die here, which is just, no, no, I thought that was me, <laughs> uh, but a blocker died, which is fantastic. It's not a game over unless all of your unions die, or if you have a guest union, then it is game over if your main party dies, which is just fantastic. I slowed down time here because I know the critical triggers are coming up. So the critical triggers are just they're mini quick time events that you press in order to get a critical trigger and do slightly more damage if you do it consecutively. But I can never pull that off. So after it triggers and we get the, the uh, tutorial, I set them on automatic because I can't <laughs> I can't uh, pull them all off to save my life. Sweet. 
So these are little warp gates that will automatically, I need to stop saying that word, they'll take us out of the dungeon. Sometimes they'll appear near your objective because the developers figured, hey, this is a hard boss coming up, maybe they want to leave and come back later. Or these little warp gates will appear near the middle or end of the dungeon. So right here, if this loading screen will get out of my way, here we go. We need to go to the Rebellia Ruins with Pages now. And I believe I disable Pages' uh, combat skills because he is a mage, so I do want him to primarily focus on his magic. Uh, we won't have enough units to create a mage union just yet. That comes a little bit later, I'd say after the first couple hours of this game. Oh yes, and I will be disabling Rush's magic too, besides healing later on. Uh, I want him to be completely combat focused, aside from his healing magic. That's it. Observe my stats carefully before making a choice. Okay, that'll be it for this video. In the next one, we will be heading to a place called Dilmore. We will be recruiting a little mining creature called Mr. Diggs, and then we will be recruiting Boslin. And then way after that, we will be fighting two bosses, which is going to be great. Hopefully, I will see you guys there. Thank you for watching.